Okay, the meeting will now come to order. We'll begin with introductions, um, and we'll start with our town staff. Don. One guy is for the secretary. Dan. Dan Bure, town planner. Okay, and for commission members, we'll start with introductions starting on my left. Victoria Chat Chat. Bob Ellsworth. Chantal Foster. Carolyn Freeman. Robert Taylor. And I believe online we have, did I see Tom? Yes. Okay, so Tom, we will not be seating any alternates tonight as we do have a, a um, full staff. So next um, item is to accept the agenda. Now we were presented with a revised agenda and I believe the addition was to add a second application to receive in tonight, application 2211, which we will get to. And I would like to add um, two additional items. So we're going to create a, let's see, an item called new business, which we will do after we receive in applications. And there's two topics I'd like to add to that. One would be a discussion regarding a clerk of the works at Brainerd Place. And the second one would be a general discussion about regulations for charging stations for electric vehicles. Other than that, the agenda um, is as presented. So may I have a motion to accept the agenda, please? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the agenda is accepted as amended. First item of business is a public hearing for application 22-06. This, this public hearing uh, for this application remains open from our previous meeting. However, we will be continuing any discussion on this application for the, on the December 15th meeting. Anything to add to that, Dan? Uh, no, I, we did receive the request for the extension to do so. So we should be all set. Okay, good, thank you. So then we'll move on to our regular meeting. Um, and the first item is application 22-09-1116 Portland Cobalt Road, request for a site plan modification to alter approved plan to, a, to allow for approved paved parking area to be changed to gravel surface. Application and property of Graf Enterprises, LLC. Map 23, Lot 30, Zone B2. Would someone like to speak on behalf of this application? Yeah, if you would approach the podium, please, and uh, identify yourself. Good evening. Uh, my name is Steve Graff, um, the owner of the property at 1116 Portland Cobalt Road. Um, we also run absolute air services out of that location. and. Um, Basically, what we're looking to do, our, our, what our business is, an HVAC business, um, heating and air conditioning business, and we provide services and installations of heating and air conditioning um, equipment and, um, and things of that nature. Um, basically, what we're looking to do is just have a place to warehouse materials and equipment um, for those installations and for those services to support our staff. Um, the majority of the folks that work for me take vehicles home, they come in in the morning, grab their supplies, and they go out for the course of the day. They may or may not return the remainder of the day. So there's not a lot of vehicles that stay there on the regular during the course of the day. Um, and is why we would like to, with, for our addition that we are planning to build, we would like to go with a gravel parking lot versus a paved parking lot, just as a cost measure, cost savings measure. It, it deals with the water runoff and retention and things like that. If we do a, a gravel surface, the water could get back down into the earth as opposed to running off towards a neighbor's lot and property where we would have to have some sort of retention system in place. So it, it proves to be a, a substantial cost savings measure for us, um, which is what we're hoping to take that approach. It's, it's really just a storage facility. It's not something that folks would frequent and on the regular. Um, outside of our staff may be loading up materials in the morning. Um, so, we're, so we're asking if we could actually have a, a paved parking area um, as opposed to having to provide a paved parking area. 
A gravel, your a gravel parking area. Yeah, uh, yes, I'm sorry, paved. yes, a, a gravel versus the paved, yes, sorry, thank you. Okay, questions? So have you had a chance to look at the letter that uh, Jacobson Yes, and I think there's two areas of concern that he had expressed in the letter. Um, one was with a handicapped parking space that met the ADA compliance, um, which I believe we could still manage to, to do that on the property. I was talking with, with Dan a little bit earlier, and we feel confident that there's a way that we could actually accomplish that, maintain a ADA compliant parking space um, that is paved and close to the building. Um, so we will definitely address that. The, the other issue was with a radius um, towards the, uh, on the entrance of our property um, that goes into Route 66. I guess that's something that the state wants to see, a radius entrance there. So um, I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what we would have to do with that, Dan. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's either um, you install a curb as previously approved or you get an exemption from DOT so that you wouldn't have to do that. So we, we, we could reach out to DOT and see what they think about the plan as it's, as it's shown. Um, and if they agree, we, we can eliminate that curb. If, if not, um, that simply can be installed per, per Jeff's memo. And, and the dumpster? Uh, yes, I have no problem moving that to the rear of the property. I don't think that's an issue whatsoever, on our end anyway. But, yeah, so just so that you guys are aware, um, as a condition, uh, and I had sent this out earlier to, to Mr. Mr. Graff, um, uh, I was going to have a condition that uh, the dumpster be screened or moved to the back of the, the, the lot, um, that the ADA uh, van accessible uh, spot was, was uh, situated on the lot, um, and then also that the uh, curb, um, oh, I guess waiver for a better term, of, uh, better, lack of a better term, um, was uh, secured from DOT or that the curb was installed as prior, uh, priorly, that's not a word, as, as approved prior. Previously. Previously, there we go. Um, so I just want to let you know about that. And the plantings have changed. We didn't get one. Of, we didn't get that, did we? I believe Liz sent this out to you guys. Um, not, this, I not this week. I didn't get that. I think she had sent we this had, out uh, other, about a month ago. Other, yeah, because yeah, this didn't open at the last now. meeting. Oh, okay. So that was part of it. Uh, I do believe the the plantings meet our our, our zoning. Um, I think it was in this uh, so, south southern corner here. Right. Yeah, the southeastern corner where some of the plantings were reduced, but I do believe the the plantings that shown uh, meets uh, meets our screening criteria between commercial and residential lots. So it sounds like, if I understand it correctly, this um, gravel area would be used primarily for accessing your new storage building? Yes. And as opposed to parking or public? Correct. Public use? It, it'd be more of uh, just a, a right of way to get to that, to that storage facility. It, yeah, parts of it will still be striped as per the plan, um, but I think, as he's pointed out, for the majority of, of the working day and, and, and at night, those spots will be unoccupied. And what about the um, comment that we got from the fire? I don't, I don't believe he's familiar with that. I did put that as a condition as well. Okay. Uh, and just to let you know, the fire department just wants to make sure any base you put down meets uh, a, a heavy enough load rating for the fire trucks to, okay. to, to go on that. So that's 75,000 pounds. Okay. So I, I, don't, I don't believe that's an issue either. Yeah, um, I would have to defer to others on that one that not my area of expertise but yes i would do whatever is required okay so i mean a, a gravel road i, I kind of like the the idea of the gravel because as you said it allows the water to go into the into Back the ground in which yeah. is much better uh, but 
for ongoing maintenance and stuff like that i mean if you do have a lot of traffic through there i guess it's possible that it gets it gets worn out or has to get redone or i don't know how do you deal with that well, pavement over time would have to be redone mm -hmm. at some point as well yeah. um but yeah i mean there would be maintenance associated to it i believe there'd be ma maintenance associated to any property for that matter maybe a little bit more frequency with the gravel yeah but um you know from from where i'm looking at it it's just that initial investment piece right. i'm just i'm trying to grow the business our business is growing i'm trying to keep up with it um right now what we're doing is we're renting three storage um, um three storage facilities from global storage down near the rec fields mm -hmm. and i mean it works but from a logistical standpoint of just knowing what our inventory is it's mm -hmm. just it's a hassle it's just mm -hmm. It complicates it. It it, um, it interrupts our efficiency on the daily. So it's just it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. folks over there are awfully nice and very accommodating, but it's just a challenge for mm -hmm. us in our business. That's all. Mm -hmm. okay. The questions, comments. Did you have something before? Um. So, where? I, I so there won't be um, a stormwater runoff detention with the with the gravel surface is that correct there still will be but it, it will be a reduced size it, it's basically to for the buildings um but not for the driveway correct S so where does so i'm i'm assuming that y you're be you're not going to be able to plow because you can't really plow gravel very well so you're going to probably use more um, chemicals, salt, uh, well, right, to, to reduce. I wouldn't intend on doing that. I mean, last year, the, so there's gravel that's there in that side yard now. And so last year, the gentleman that was plowing for us was, was plowing that. Some of the stone gets moved, you know, <laughs> because he's plowing. Right. But it, in the spring, we just move it back. You just and move just, it back. Yeah, just, yeah. But we weren't really, I mean, the only salt that we actually applied was like an immediate walk path in, in and out of our existing building. Okay. But um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't intend on using, I'd still try to move the this, this snow with a plow. Okay. Um, but I, I get the concern, though. I, you know, I wouldn't want to be putting chemicals into the ground either. But whether it's paved or gravel, it's going to end up in the ground, I would think. Right. R right, but if it's paved, usually... Yeah, you plow it, and then sometimes people who Understood. put the gravel, they tend to not plow it. Understood, right. Right, so, okay. But you are Understood. plowing it. Yeah. Yes, oh yeah, we were last year. Okay, yeah. So that's the other non-intentional errors. Okay. But these bigger ones. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Okay, hearing none, Dan, do we have a motion? Uh, yeah, uh, did you want to close? Oh, we don't, it's not a public hearing. That's right. Thank you, Chair, too. Thank you. Motion to approve application 2209 1116 Portland Cobalt Road request for site plan modification to alter approved plan to allow for approved parking, paved parking area to be changed to gravel surface application and property of Graph Enterprises LLC map 23 lot 30 zone B2 as shown on site development plan titled 1116 Portland Cobalt Road as well as described in narrative and based on information submitted testimony presented during hearing and subject to the following instructions and conditions integral to this application one that the application complies with comments from the fire marshal from memo dated October 23rd, 2022. Two, that the certified letter of approval be placed on the site plan and that a mylar and three paper copies of plans be submitted. After endorsement, the mylars must be filed on the land records within 180 days per zoning regulation 10.5.3.2.8. These requirements must be met prior to the issuance of a zoning permit. Three, that a zoning permit application be submitted in accordance with zoning regulation section 11.1.1.a to ensure compliance with this approval. Four, that any exterior light fixtures must comply with zoning regulations section 8.3 and must be approved by the zoning enforcement officer prior to installation. 
five that all proposed improvements associated with this ap application are to be completed according to, according to the approved plan prior to the issuance of the required certificate of zoning compliance to operate businesses at this new building or a performance bond will be required in accordance with zoning regulations section 11.2.2 six any proposed signage shall, shall meet zoning regulations section 8.4 seven that this approval will expire in five years eight that as a condition of approval the applicant ad addr address the comments from the town's engineers memo dated 11 17 22 specifically that the applicant provides a parking space as shown on prior approved plan that meets ADA requirements and is dimensioned to be van accessible that the applicant moves the proposed dumpster to rear of, of property or have it in a location screened from street mm -hmm. lastly that the applicant get DOT approval for elimination of the northwestern curb radius reasons the proposal conforms to section 5 and 10.5 of the zoning regulations yeah second to the motion please second okay we'll begin voting we'll start with Victoria I vote aye Chantel aye Carolyn aye Rob aye Bob I vote aye any opposed there would be none so the application is approved thank you okay, thank, thank you. you good luck thank okay. you Okay, next item of business is to receive in two applications. The first is 22 10 311 Brownstone Avenue, request for a special <coughs> permit modification to change approved storage building to public bathrooms and welcome center with small studio living unit. New pump out station to be installed on site to allow for full <coughs> service campground from current use of semi primitive. Application and property of Dean and Darlene Susi, Map 28, Lot 54, Zone B-3. Anything on that, Dan? Um, no, I believe you guys are pretty familiar with this. Um, it just goes back to a uh, condition that you guys had. Um, well, he would have, they would have had to come back for some of the changes to the building, but there was a condition at your uh, prior uh, approval that, that they you know, meet all the, the, the regulations for uh, a full service campground, which, which is a little, you know, requires all these other things. Mm -hmm. So um, I, we can set both the, these things for December 1st. I'm not sure if they're going to be ready in terms of reviews and everything with the holiday. Um, it doesn't require a small studio living unit. So yeah, they, they're scrapping the, I believe the, the the, the home more of the home they were going to build there was a home. yeah there was a house on on the site and they're looking to do just a studio in the in the main building and and take the house uh, yeah they're not they're not going to do the house anymore so it would just be a, so a studio the small studio would be in place of the house it would be in the same building as the bathrooms and the welcome center uh which was originally approved as a storage building up to the fr the front side yeah, of the, the, the entrance it's a separate building though isn't it right yeah so they're eliminating the house footprint and only keeping the storage uh building footprint okay so potentially december 1st but yeah maybe not okay then the next application to receive in is application 22-11 47 lower main street and adjacent town lot request for site plan modification for twelve thousand. 560 square foot addition and new parking lot application and property of 47 lower main llc map 19 lots 82 and 83 zone i yes yeah, so this is just uh the ct pharmaceutical building uh, the cultivation uh that was approved uh way way back when mm -hmm. um that that is has as they're looking to start that back up again and increase the size um, and their expansion eats up the parking that's required for the site um, so they will be proposing um, and have to work out an agreement with the town of Portland on the adjacent lot to meet their parking requirements interesting okay then we'll move on to our new two new agenda items uh, we'll call this new business I'm not sure what the number will end up being but um, so the first um, 
is discussion regarding having a clerk of the works for Brainerd Place. And um, Victoria, I think you wanted to start the discussion on this. Yeah, do you, do you know if we have um, anyone employed or volunteering for the town that oversees the, um, the work being done on a daily basis now? Is there a clerk of the works? So there's, there's no one on a daily basis? I, I, I guess you know we don't go by there or go on site every day, um, but me, uh, the building official, and the fire marshals uh, all work in coordination to uh, oversee the project um, and, and, and provide approvals and COs as they move forward. Okay, um, so so it's it's been my experience growing up in a family of construction mm -hmm. um, that did a lot of work for municipalities that um, there was always uh, somebody employed by the town whether it be a paid or a volunteer position that oversaw work being done um, on a daily basis and it could be an, an at minimum it would it was someone that would go every day and mark the time of day, the weather conditions, what was happening on the site, is, was any work being done, um, how many employees were there. So that, it's, and, it, and it served, and that was at minimum. And then it, it went all the way to um, the, someone who was actually a, a lead inspector who, who looked at every piece of architectural um, material that went into the restoration of some older buildings. So the, the, the gamut of experience goes from somebody maybe who's a volunteer in the historical society to someone who's an expert in, in um, restoration of historic buildings. And, that, and, and, and at minimum, it would be it was at minimum um, time of day, weather conditions, how many people are on the site and what's being done so that there appears to the builder that, that, that someone is watching and holding accountability that work is actually taking place. Because if the builder comes in one day and says, well, you know, I'm really behind, because I had you know, 32 days of rain. You have a little notebook that says, actually, you only had five days of rain. You didn't have 32 days of rain. And, you know, and, and you know, I've had someone there every day except for two days. Well, actually, you haven't have had anyone there. You know, so it, it kind of, it, it's somebody who speaks sort of for the town and just kind of keeps an eye on things. So we, we are keeping an eye on things, not 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 to that degree. Um, so I guess the only thing I if if there is no so if you were doing the work for the municipality, if they were doing like a municipal job for the municipality, I could see us holding the contractor to a timeline. Right now they have a five year zoning approval with a five year extension if they ask for it. That's the only zoning timeline that we have. Now the building official and the building permits, they have their own timeline. And, and Pete, uh, Pete is very conscious of that. I mean, we were on site yesterday. Um, we, we stopped by the site. Um, I, I, I've certainly already intervened. Why well, I didn't go to the site myself. We got a complaint that work was start, starting early on Monday. I ended up contacting the uh, foreman and also the project manager and you know rectified that, let them know that they were outside of their um, outside of construction hours and that they could not start till seven they indicated that they would rectify that and i you know reached back out to the the, the complainty and, and made sure that me and her are in contact to make sure that this doesn't occur again um we don't have um the staff currently to, to do anything like that now i will say on the restoration aspect of the project uh we will be getting assistance either from a private entity to help us as well as the, the historic society as well. Um, 
and now in terms of what I think will end up happening, which will be closer to what you have in your mind, is when construction does start, Pete's going to be out there doing inspections all the time. Uh, yeah. Pete, the building official. Um, you know, he's going to be going out there for, so it's for everything. Really between you and Pete and the fire marshal. Yes, and Pete is also a deputy fire marshal as well. So a, a lot of it's going to come down to Pete um, on the building side of things. But again, um, you know, they have to meet their approval. So if anything they do does not meet that approval, they have to rectify it or come to you as for a modification. And if you didn't want that modification to happen, we would force them to undo what they did. Say if they, I don't know, poured a foundation in the wrong spot that either encroached on setbacks or, or something like that, or if they did not plant screening, I mean, we would withhold the CO on, on the building. Um, now, were, were those jobs that you were referring to, were those jobs done for the municipality? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's why there was a little more oversight in terms of you know trying to hold them to like a completion date and making sure they're working the days they're supposed to and not having cost overruns if there's a if the, if the contractor has a cost overrun that's that's on you know the, the developer the town doesn't face any um, fiscal risk on that on that work um, one thing we are working out and uh, I, I'm looking into is all the fees associated with this um, and and uh, inspection fees and things of that nature. Uh, Mary did a lot of work on that, so I'm going back and reviewing her work. Uh, and we will, we may have other funds that, that we can use to assist Pete on some of these inspections, because it's, it's a lot of work uh, for him. Um, it's kind of like all the plan reviews are being done by ICC. They're not being done in-house, they're being done by uh, uh, like the National Code Compliance, yeah. International Code Compliance, so they're doing all the reviews. Uh, Pete you know, looks over those reviews as well, but, um, you know, Pete, Pete's going to be the one on site a lot, and then I will be following up on site to make sure a lot of the associated improvements are there. Uh, one thing I did leave out was um, our public works director, Ryan Halpin. Um, he's been intimately involved um, with Mizzy. Uh, they are doing all of the storm drainage work, uh, as well as, um, you know, uh, water pipes and all that kind of stuff. So he's, he's already done a lot of reviews requested some changes based off of past reviews and you know he has a lot of experience um, from his prior job working for ONG he was a highway contractor he, he ran crew you know he ran um, you know construction on 91 um, doing the I believe it was the uh, the new f uh, bridge over uh, what is it three no no uh, whatever the the new bridge is between 91 and 84 where they moved it over to the left going up north to Hartford. So he, yeah, yeah, it is, it really is. Um, so uh, he's, he's got a, a vast array of experience in the private sector and he's been a really, um, he's really fit, fit and seamless into the, into the public works department and um, you know, well, we're certainly lucky to have him. So, so there is definitely a lot of oversight and I would say Ryan is, is actually probably been on site three or four times a week at least so between all of us, somebody's been, probably been there almost every day. Um, you know, currently where they're at right now is um, we're finally getting um, the finishing touches on the approvals for the, the first apartment buildings foundation, uh, along with the coffee uh, shop and other restaurant foundation. Um, one thing that's being held up a little bit is the demolition of the, the small squat addition on the back of the Hart Jarvis house. Um, the Historic Society is, is doing that review. Um, so that's held up um, securing that building a little bit. Uh, but things are moving forward. They, they have the detention ponds done, um, which, which I thought was really important. They did all the ENS controls as, as per plan. Um, so, so we've been in pretty good contact and um, you know I have the project managers, the foreman, I have all their contact information. I've met, we've, we've all met them. Um, and so it, it, it has gotten off to a pretty good start. Personally, I want to see concrete go get poured. <laughs> I want to make sure this happens. Um, but we are trying our best to, uh, to stick our noses in somewhat to make sure they're doing what they're doing. 
What, what about um, looking into having maybe a volunteer well, um, you know, if the funds aren't there. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. It, I'm wary of that. Um, it would all, a couple factors. It would depend on what their expertise is, um, you know, what their background is, but it would also greatly hinge on whether uh, they would be welcomed on site by the developer. So um, um, it's their property. Dan, um, on that note, um, I kind of want to point out that. Uh, with the project that has generally a lot of interest and the short notice that we had in adding this to the agenda, I don't know how much we want to be you know, talking about it because we're going to have to repeat pretty much everything you just said at another meeting because I don't know how many people are actually going to you know, know that we were talking about this because we added it minutes before the meeting started. So, um, and I mean, granted everything's recorded and going to be published that way. It's just that... Um, there's, you know, we'd want to get, you know, have this discussion with the developer, have them brought in. Um, I would at least like to hear some public comment about what's, uh, at least, you know, the opinions of the, you know, townspeople, and to see if we want to even make a recommendation to the board of selectmen for uh, a budget line to either add in a paid position or to see if there's any interest from somebody in the, you know, the town that would. Do exactly that. We can talk about volunteering position and whether or not the developer would be interested in cooperating with that. And if we did that, would we even need to make the, a modification to the site plan to include that uh, type of oversight for a uh, either a paid or voluntary position? So, um, so I, I guess my point is is that uh, before we get too deep into that conversation today, I would like to table it for uh, at least next meeting where we can have it properly noticed and people who are the you know, townspeople who are interested in the project, uh, both stakeholders and residents uh, can you know, come in and chime in appropriately. So, so I'm happy to keep this as a standing item. Mm -hmm. um, we certainly are allowed to add things like this to, to the agenda. Uh, I, I definitely understand your concern. Um, I mean, I'm not disagreeing saying we can't add it. I'm just saying that under a normal project, I'd say, yeah, the, the last minute addition's fine. It's just that this isn't really a normal project. You know, the last time we had a site plan modification for this project, we had two three hour meetings in a row on the modification. And a lot of people, you know, added in comments on it and a lot of people are interested in it. And are those meetings that that project appears on the agenda usually brings in more attendance than anything. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a, I would rather give people notice of what we're talking about and discussing um, properly for that, just for that purpose. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, I, I don't think this is something we could force on the developer. In the end, they're responsible for meeting the obligations of their approval, and we will we'll be doing inspections to ensure that regardless. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference between you know, our situation and when somebody's doing work specifically for the municipality. I'm actually satisfied with oh, okay. the, the answer that, oh, okay. that you gave to the question that I asked. Um, but if so, if you guys aren't satisfied with the answer that he gave and you feel like it needs to go further, then by all means we could table it. Um, my, my concern was that that there's somebody visiting and watching and I, I'm satisfied between Dan, Pete, um, our, our first selectman, the fire marshal, and the fact that once, ren once restoration begins, someone's going to be um, added to the team. Um, that, that kind of satisfied my question about this. So, um, yeah, for me, I, I'm personally, I'm satisfied with that. Um, if, if, if you feel like it needs to continue, um, that's totally. The only reason why I would say I, I would like it just to be continued would only be to open it up to the public yeah. and have their input on things. Cause yeah. that's really the whole point of why we're here is to represent the, you know, hear the town people's, you know, 
concerns yeah. and opinions on the town and uh, make decisions based off of that. And any other project, like I said, I probably wouldn't have you know, yeah. that big of a concern, but given the amount of interest and how long this project has been going on, uh, I, I would just say like we table it and continue it and then at least have it on the agenda for next meeting. So if somebody wants to come in and make a comment on it, it's on the agenda. You know, we don't even have to say anything about it too much on the meeting other than saying, we had this discussion. If anybody's here and wants to make a comment on it, you're more than welcome to today. Um, so that way, you know, people can, at least they won't feel blindsided when they review the, the video, you know, next week or tomorrow and, you know, feel like we did something underhanded or something, which obviously isn't the, the case, but it, it's just a, you know, I, I would rather just make sure that people feel like their opinions and concerns can be voiced. I, I just have a comment about that. Um, in the past, when we were waiting for things to happen with Brainerd Place, there was a Brainerd Place update mm -hmm. item, agenda item on the agenda. And maybe that could be replaced with an update of what is happening, you know, like feedback from from the from Pete or from you or from the mm -hmm. uh, you know from Ryan, wh whoever is building, wh whoever is visiting the site, and and we don't need to make it a a big, you know, they don't need to write a five-page report, but just kind of where we're at, maybe every every couple of weeks to just give an update on where things are and what what they expect to be doing next that that's my suggestion on yeah, that. there used to be a line yeah. item yeah and, and maybe we ought to have that again yes yeah, so what i'll do is i will for next meeting I'll, I'll make a line item about oversight and then in subsequent meetings i'll just keep a standing item on there for a brainer place update and i'll fill you in with whatever i got um, what, okay. with whatever's relevant at the time. That and if great. it's easier, maybe we can make that like the first meeting of the, the month type of, you know, report. I'll so probably just know. keep it on the agenda every meeting every and meeting. then just give you what I got whenever there's something. Because um, okay. I'll is forget that, to, that, to do it back and forth. That's it, right? yeah. All right. That sounds good. Thank and then you. Mike, yeah, so your explanation about the oversight that is going on it was very helpful. Um, it might help for us and for the townspeople to understand too. How do like the board of selectmen get their updates on progress? So on this, on this, the board, maybe Ryan would give them an update, but there's, they're not really. I know they're in, in invested, and um, they're certainly, um, you know, you know, want to be informed, but that's not really in their wheelhouse. So and so. I guess what I'm hearing is that there's no real mechanism for reporting back from anybody on to, to the BOS or to to uh, yeah, there's no real mechanism for getting that. Well, not to a not to say a, a body like yours or theirs, but certainly the land use office. Right. Yeah. Right. That that's. I'm not saying it's yeah. not being done. It's just yeah. that, that so, I it mean, doesn't necessarily get to where. Yeah. yeah to right, because at this point, you already gave them the approval to do what they want to do. Now it's our job in the land use office to make sure they do it like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. We're just conscientious, that's all. So I, I appreciate <laughs> questions. It's good to be informed. Okay. Yeah, all right, thanks. Thank okay, you. so I think the takeaway then was to add a, a line item on, on, on the staff, on the yep. agenda every, yep. every meeting for a brief update. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the next item, I've been thinking about over the last couple of weeks was um, should the, should we um, start discussing regulations for electronic vehicle charging stations from a zoning perspective? I think that's a great mm -hmm. idea. I mean, we, what would what would we do if somebody came in uh, with an application? How would that look to us? So. It really depends on how hands-on you want to be. Um, 
currently right now Portland doesn't regulate mechanicals uh, in terms of setbacks except if it's say a ground mounted solar array um, unless it's something large enough that uh, it might be considered a structure um, you know I've, I've had I'm, I'm having a debate right now with the gentleman uh, 47 lower main whether a co2 tank that's pretty sizable should be considered a structure I'm leaning towards yes it's it's a little beyond the scope of say a generator or a air conditioning mechanical and so your definition of mechanical then is could you give me it would be like an hvac unit okay. uh generator uh propane tank something of that nature um this this could be something that falls into that um you know right now anything that uh, affects parking in any way needs to be approved by you i can't do an administrative um site plan modification if something affects parking or traffic flow. Technically then those parking so, spaces would affect parking. Correct. Only so, because they're usually restricted to EVs only. Well, yeah, so it, it would affect the, um, you know, the number of spots in the parking lot, you know, potential traffic flow. So that that's always, this would always come back to you as either a site plan modification or a special permit modification. And then it really, you know, boils down to you know how hands-on you want to be prior to that in in and how this is set up um so in terms of signage um in terms you know whether you want setbacks for these or whether you don't um you know i could sure try to provide you some of the, the work i did in no lime which they wanted to be really hands-on they wanted you know everything spelled out everything defined um pretty rigidly as to what somebody could or could not do um, so it really comes down to, you know, what direction you want to go. Do you, do you want to take it, you know, on a uh, case by case application, or do you want to think about things in that sphere that you really don't want to see? And we could, you know, uh, you know, ex you know, exclude those things from, you know, possibility on the electric vehicle charging station, uh, side, um, you know, some towns mandate certain new developments do a certain amount of electric, you know, installing electric vehicle charging stations. That's a, more of a policy decision on your point. Um, you know, it is, you know, an expense. Um, so, you know, when I was doing old limes, I was reading Grotten's and Middletown's. You know, Middletown's is, is, is pretty laid back compared to, say, what Grotten was. You know, Grotten is really um, mandating that a lot of these charging stations go in and then even um, to a degree where future growth is there um, but you know it's kind of a you kind of have to weigh you know the benefits and the costs of that because um, one you know these charging stations are very expensive so if you mandate a certain amount of charging stations for parking spaces you're adding on depending on the charging station they choose I mean and you can also regulate that um, you know, you know, ten thousand dollars to you know, yeah. you know, you know, way, way up there for you know, conduit is very expensive. So depending on, um, you know, the parking lot situation, you know, just laying the conduit underground to get to the charging stations is extremely expensive right now. Um, I can see in the near future where having charging stations might be a big attraction. Absolutely. C correct. And so then you you, you want to think about whether you want to, as a policy decision, require these things or allow the developer, developer I can't speak tonight, um, or, or applicant or whoever they are, um, you know, to dictate that themselves, you know, based on what they see demand from their customers in the market. Is there any discussion of these at Brainerd Place? N n not currently, no. That's, okay. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of surprised. Yeah. But that well, certainly I mean, may at the be. the time, that was it was a you know was a few years ago, and mm. but it's it's going to happen. It's gonna I mean, happen. yeah, right now we would just treat them as accessory structures. So if if it was in the parking lot and they weren't changing the traffic flow, we might do it administratively. Um, I can see though possibly restaurants, mm -hmm. salons. Yep. Might be wanting to add these to their existing. Yeah. So some of the research shows. Um, you know, if you have these charging stations um, at certain, um, you know, say retail venues or a mall, people tend to stay there longer. 
Um, so it is a bit of a business decision because you know you, you you have these, and then those people who are parking tend to shop for half an hour longer. Um, so you know I don't know if you want to think about what direction or discuss what direction you want to take it. Um, if you want me to try to provide some more information to you to to kind of shape your decision, um, it's really whatever well, direction you, you want to take. When you brought it up, Bob, were you just wondering what we would do you know like what would we do with that because we don't really have anything in because, our regulations because we don't have anything reg right. in regulations and you know i've been reading in the near future demand is going to be sure. quite high for these sure. um you know infrastructure to support it mm -hmm. so. but well, i i think what i'm hearing you say mm -hmm. is that it's not it really wouldn't be necessarily a problem if somebody came to us and said that they wanted to put one in we just have to consider we'd have to consider how it would be done yeah the only thing I could say is if you definitely see a, a detractor or drawback in some situations to how these might be set up that we, we put those in the regs mm -hmm. so that if that comes along in an application mm -hmm. right. you you have the, the meat in the regulations to say do a denial of that and do you have any any ex experience because you had that uh, experience in well yeah I wrote uh, do, do you have any experience with things that we probably wouldn't like or well it comes down to so they treated mechanically is very different in old line you know they had to meet setbacks if you want an air conditioning condenser okay. on your property okay. it needed to meet setbacks you know the like underground buried propane tank uh, 500 gallon one building codes 10 feet well so in old Lyme, i would have to tell people to meet the setbacks which were in you know a lot of town is a two acre zone it's 50 feet from the rear 50 feet from the front and you know 35 feet from the sides so it really restricted the areas people wanted to put them um you know here in town right currently um we're, we're more hands off they would just need to put that 10 feet off the property line they wouldn't have to meet our setbacks same thing with the generator so like one of the first things i did in old Lyme because people had such difficulty with the condensers and the generators was to reduce setbacks and for those those items but they still wanted certain setbacks for those things um so one example i read was a safety thing now you've got to be aware that the that the uh, cables can be trip hazards yeah yeah and then like they wanted specific you know regulations on signage um yep. they wanted screen criteria so say if this if you had a commercial business next to a resident, uh, say a residential property, say similar to uh, what we just heard, 1116 Portland Cobalt Road, you know, they wanted those charging stations to meet setbacks, um, but they also had parking setbacks in terms of where parking lots could be. So the regulations down there were much more complicated and they wanted to be much more hands on. So it's really just a, you know, a, a thought exercise as to how, how, how hands-on do you want to be or do you want to let the applicant kind of um, you know kind of determine you know what's best for the uh, the site now you'd still have a voice in terms of if you thought that wasn't safe in terms of traffic flow and that kind of stuff we would still do those reviews um, and I think even with a special permit modification um, in a lot of situations you know we could still you know dictate some of the conditions that those could be set on um, it's just it really it, it all comes down to how involved you want to be in terms of these being set up I guess I'd probably have a lot more questions than you would have answers for but I guess I mean you, you can uh, give me if you if, if you want you can I, we can certainly try to go over them now if you want to I'll provide you know email me questions I can come back and provide feedback to the whole board well I, I guess part of it would be I, I'd be curious to find out how many vehicles electric vehicles are currently in the town so then we could figure out if we installed something right now how much use would we get um, and then uh, follow that up with how many of these charging stations are publicly owned versus privately owned um, are they the towns installing this or is it private property and you know people going out of their way to install a ten thousand uh, dollar charger uh, so uh, you know th that would be something I would like to at least know um, because our if people in the state are focusing like you know if private business businesses um, are you know installing these things you know that's something I would like to know 
because I don't know how many of the businesses in town won't have enough parking in their own lots to be able to support a vehicle sitting there for longer than 10 minutes. Um, there's a couple of lots I could think of where it, it would be you know, feasible. Uh, I mean, the one that's attached to this building alone would be a good spot for them, mm -hmm. just because it's usually empty and... Or a Tritown Plaza yeah, would be um, another one. Yeah. But outside of that, like, you know, I wouldn't see too many businesses on Main Street doing that. I, I mean... Well, so I, don't yeah, so I don't think we'd get... You'd get them in the, in the parking lots for the businesses. You're not going to get them in the right-of-ways, I don't think, although, you know, that, that would involve DOT. Mm -hmm. um, just to... I guess uh, a quick response on to who's interested in installing them. So we, this, what we do will not affect, and I wouldn't want to affect anyone putting a residential, like a, sing, like a charger on their single family house. Right. I could see multifamilies making, maybe making certain provisions for. Um, the inquiries I got, and I haven't gotten any while I've been here in Portland, but in the past, um, Tesla really wanted to put one down in Old Lyme. And then I got an inquiry from another company that wanted to install them at the big Y down there. So it was more privately driven um, than publicly. I don't know if... The ones in Glastonbury are private, right? And well, I'm they're, not they're, sure. They're owned by... Well, I, I know that you have to you have to download an app for the particular company mm -hmm. and um, you, know, you have to... You, know, you pay with a card I for the time that you're... <laughs> For the time that you're plugged in. What was that? I think I, I kicked the plug. Sorry. Ah, yeah. <laughs> and and, and I, so I think it's a it's a, an enterprise like a. Well, like yeah, a and I know some some businesses have models where they're willing to pay for them themselves on behalf of the customers. So it really kind of runs the gambit. Um, you know, I I don't know what appetite the the board of selectmen currently have to to drop or invest. You know probably would be six figures, uh, something, something substantial um, to, to kind of get it on, on here. And then, you know, it also comes down to what kind of charging station you have to install because the costs vary. Um, you know, you, you have a level two, which is kind of reason, is in the middle ground. A level one is more kind of like you're just plugging it into your house. A level two, you, you, you can get a certain amount of, you know, like, Faster charge. Yeah, I can't remember the mileage. So Tesla has the, you know, the level threes, and those are extremely expensive. Um, but whereas the level two, if you left it, you know, your car plugged in for an hour or two, that would do the job. You know, so if you went to the restaurant, you plugged your car, and you probably, you know, get significant mileage out of that. Um, but it's a significant cost savings. Um, so you probably would want the market to dictate that. Although you could also dictate that. Um, but, but you have to, you know, be cognizant of the um, kind of fiscal, um, you know, burden that you're, you're placing on some, you know, some of these private entities, depending on what you would require, you know, as a policy decision. So, so they don't do it themselves. It's not, it, it's, they don't install it and, and profit from it. They, and, and it, it, it depends. So some, some are looking to do that. Some may, may just be looking to, you know, have that as kind of an amenity at their business um, but it's also private companies that come in and you know speak to say uh, you know yeah. an Adams you know um, owner and it's like I would like to do this on your on your lot where can I do this and you know I'd like to charge so it can be a win-win in that situation but then each of those have specific requirements so one of the concerns from one of the companies that I was dealing with was um, the board was very specific on what kind of signage and advertising you could have there and what they were developing wasn't in line with what they would need in terms of the advertisement and stuff like that associated with that electric vehicle charging station so it wasn't going to work for their business model so um, you know you, you kind of just have to weigh you know kind of what what you'd like to see um, and how involved you'd like to be and keep in mind the environment five years from now may be very different yeah, and so there's, there's, and there's, uh, in this arena. Yeah, and there's, there's very levels, <laughs> various levels of, of charging, you know, how fast you charge, but there's also different charging stations that only work with certain cars. Mm -hmm. So Tesla's its own thing. 
Um, there is somewhat of a universal thing, but the, the, there's there's multiple different kinds of, of, oh. of, of ways of devices that plug and you know, there's there are adapters. To, yeah, to and, yeah. I mean, it's like our plugs versus European plugs. You know, so sometimes it just yeah. doesn't work. Um, <laughs> so you, you know, you go buy the adapter. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. So, and I think you're much more in tune with this with owning an electric vehicle than I think a lot of us are. Um, but yeah, I mean. So how would what would be the best way to? continue this discussion to move forward with this? Would it be to have it a discussion item every week? Or? Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to kind of digest what we've talked about and, you know, we'll have another discussion ne uh, next meeting and then you know, I can provide information as you need. And then if you want me to develop some regulations for certain areas, I can do that. Um, if you kind of decide we'd like to only maybe prohibit th this in certain circumstances and we can add that to the regs or we could, you know, uh, you know, allow these applications to come in and, and, and see what you think um, and just uh, treat it as an accessory structure. Um, and as long as it's not, you know, unsafe, um, you know, that, that would be really be your, your reason for denial only at this point if you thought it was unsafe and the traffic was unsafe. Um, How would we encourage it? That would be through the Board of Selectmen, right? They would. They would well, so I think. I mean. Oh, you're saying, saying like, like subsidize putting, it? Yeah, putting I, I mean, a, I, I think it would be great to have them around. I think it would bring people to certain areas yeah. of town and, yeah. and, and like Brainerd Place. Like Brainerd Place, but but you know, but I don't think that's for us. I think right. that's no, more that's an awareness of that people thing. have to kind of come to. And maybe they should <clears throat> discuss how they feel about it. I don't know or no. I mean, if you wanted the town to invest in it, yes, that that that's the that would be the vehicle. Um, I would say if you want to encourage electric vehicle charging stations, you would keep the regulation um, uh, to to a minimum um, to what you think is the minimum necessary to provide that service in a, a safe and reliable way. And right now, there's nothing that prevents somebody from coming in. With no, I would just treat them as an accessory structure to whatever okay. business it was. So, I mean, that, that might be the answer for now. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you, if, I'm sure that there are people who are looking to expand electric cars, you know, the usage of electric vehicles. Well, Andy, um, Andy Bauer, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, he, he, he loves electric cars. And so he probably has, you know, something going on with trying to <coughs> get more people into using electric cars. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure those efforts are underway already. So as long as we wouldn't do anything to uh, impede, yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to disrupt that. So one thing we could actually consider is that since we're going to be discussing solar, we can lump that in with the, the solar regs or, um, or our discussion at least because that could be something we could do hand in hand where we're promoting the, you know, uh, the use and development of solar panels in the town. Alternative energy. Exactly, energy so if, you know, it could be a, you know, a push of being like, all right, you know, you, we can mm -hmm. add that in with our regulations in that, in that respect at least yeah. to make it part of that discussion. Kind of have like an alternative mm -hmm. energy umbrella. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. that sort of. And I'd be curious if this sustainable Connecticut organization, you know, has anything to say about electric vehicles and pro promotion of them. I will reach out to Mary. Mm. <laughs> okay, so more to come on that, I guess. So we will move on to old business. Update to our cannabis zoning regulations. Okay, so I, I had a discussion with Carrie. Um, uh, I, I guess the, the only way to kind of ensure, and I, I don't know if you remember, we were talking about, we want to keep, you guys want to keep it at one. The four mile radius thing is, is possible. Um, it is unorthodox, um, but we would still run into the situation where if, say, the current one uh, went out of business, we'd still have 
that one being able to open up again, and another one that could apply. Uh, we could put potential language in there um, that I think if you lost your state license, that you would lose your zoning approval, that that entity would lose their zoning approval. We certainly want to make sure that it could be transferable if that's something that can be done in the future. Not to not to gum up the works, but I I think that is the the simplest solution. That's that's interesting. Um, it's just to make sure if, if they don't, I, I you know, the, the state doesn't have any feedback in terms of what we can do. Um, they passed their law. <laughs> so the, it's kind of up to us to figure out. Certainly, you could see if the Board of Selectmen has appetite to do what Cromwell did, but I'm not sure they want to take that up or weigh, weigh in on, on that particular, you know, policy. It's, it's more of a planning and zoning thing um, than anything else. Um, so, so if you want, I can try to, you know, add that into the, the cannabis and, uh, regulations that we had discussed um, and then bring that back to you next time to, just to see if, if, if that looks more suitable to you than what I had done last time with the prohibition. I, I like that. Okay. And then obviously, regardless of whatever we, the end product is of this, it will be reviewed by Kerry prior to whenever we bring this to a public hearing, just to make sure. Prior to a public hearing. Yeah, everything is, is how it should be and we're not leaving ourselves open to something or something is, you know, gonna, gonna put the, the, the town in you know, a position where we're getting sued. Yeah. Um, you know, Old Saybrook is being sued now by one of their applicants mm -hmm. um, that they denied. Um, that was, you know, they had an existing medical approval for the site and they denied a, a, a larger retail spot there. So now that, that, that is actually going to court um, uh, under appeal. So let me incorporate this for the December 1st meeting. I, I should have time and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay. Um, more because I'm curious more than anything. Um, I'm sure you don't have that name of the case on hand, but is that something you could just share with us? Uh, I, I, I honestly just read about it in, in the paper. I, I don't know anything about the case just yet. I okay. just I saw the headline. It's um, a CT Examiner article. Okay. Um, I, I believe it was right on the front front page of the website if you go on their website. Okay. Um, you want me to send you the link at this point? I don't, I don't even know if it has a case number or anything like that. They just said they're appealing um, and that they, you know, they had some quotes. So I could send you the case if you want or the, the, the news article at this yes, point. Please. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll look for a, a, a draft update next meeting. Yes. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, so next item then is online material repository and training. Okay, so this is, we can keep this short. Um, so I did send you guys stuff uh, via Google Drive. I know I screwed it up for Chantal. That's my fault. <laughs> um, okay. Sure. Did that work out for everyone else? Mm -hmm. Did you, did you like it. that? Yeah. Did you like that format? I, I didn't get it, but I don't I sent it to the farm don't manager. You didn't get it? I sent it to the farm manager. Yeah, the, yeah that, that, the same email account I sent the other stuff to you, like yeah, five minutes I after. It. I saw everything else. I didn't see that, but right. I'll look. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, look I'll, I'll, I'll have to call you on that and see if that's I'll an issue. I'll look further. Um, Dan, do you have my Google... I was going to ask you to send me that again. You sent it to me, and I couldn't okay. find it because I wanted to put do both. Yeah. Okay. Just do this time. Yeah. Uh, so just I'll send it to me again. I have the Gmail account. Could you send me that as well? Yeah. And I can. What I can try to do is I can do both. Would you, which one would you prefer? Do you prefer the 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 farm? Because that's the one I have right now. That's the I one I use. I prefer the farm manager because that's the one I can print from. Okay. Well, what print I'll try to do is send them the to both. Okay, I'll try to send them from both. No, just just let me look for it at the farm manager. Let's keep it simple. Okay. Let's keep it at one. Okay. Well, yeah. So I know we're kind of moving slowly on this, but just want to make sure that we're all in a good good place mm -hmm. and comfortable with it before. I'm, I'm really comfortable. I never got it. <laughs> 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 yeah, just so just so that when we transition Not over. It in or anything. Dan, Dan, I just one clicked it. And it was right yeah. Thanks, Carolyn. <laughs> I don't know. It was awful easy. <laughs> <laughs> really easy, Bob, huh? 
Guess I just have some favorites on the board, what can I say? <laughs> okay, moving on then. Potential solar regulation changes for sus sustainable DCT. Okay, so uh, <coughs> step two, I guess you would call it, in uh, a Sustainable CT uh, Climate Leader Designation Award to get some points for this was to, after I did the review uh, that we talked about the second meeting in October, was just to propose uh, potential regulation changes that would address some of the uh, hindrances or, or, or barriers to solar. Mm -hmm. um, these are not, we don't have to adopt any of these. If, if I, you know, I, I had to produce this memo. If you guys like any of this stuff, certainly we can do so. Um, or I can tweak stuff based on what you think. Do you need a copy of that? Did we just, yeah, he I, gave, I, he gave us a copy. Oh. I would like a little longer to look at this, too. I think too. he got this on a Google Drive. Here's a copy of it. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to read it. I tell you. Yeah, and I apologize. I, I've been tonight. busy. So we, 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 we certainly can talk more about this. Um, at, at, at the next meeting. That would be great. Um, because we, we don't have a lot of barriers to solar, really. Um, um, you know, it goes along with the whole kind of, I think, mechanical conversation we've had in the past. Uh, been pretty uh, hands off on this. And I think, you know, some of the restrictions we currently do have, you know, I, I think they're, they're fine. Um, so I'll, I'll just run through this quickly and then we can go over it again. Um, at the next meeting. So one of the things that I identified was, uh, was height. Um, so we do have an exemption for 25% of a roof area if it's over the height limit. So it's only if the roof is over the given height limit for that zone, which in most cases it's not. Um, you know, all the houses meet the, the, the roof height limit. So it's, it's usually not an issue. And unless it's a very, very tall house so it's, it's a very limited scope and it's also um, it would dictate you know where on the roof even if even if this house is maximized out in terms of height um, we only measure height up to uh, many roofs up to uh, halfway point so any of the solar panels below that halfway point would be fine it's just the way we measure height in, in town rather than the peak like on a gambrel roof it's only halfway up or an a-frame um, it's in uh, the, it's in section two of the definitions. There's a chart. You guys can check it out if you're curious. Yeah. Um, so I, I had the current regulation in there, and really, uh, the, the two potential changes was to either say solar energy installations are exempt from height requirements entirely, or you could say uh, solar energy installations located on a roof or building. And we could make up a percentage. So I just put X percent in this case. So you could say 50%, or 75%, um, you know, if you wanted to. Uh, the next one going through this was setback requirements. Uh, this would only affect ground-mounted solar panels. Um, currently, right now, if it's a ground-mounted solar panel, it needs to meet setbacks. Um, the two suggestions I had was either say, ground-mounted solar panels are exempt from setbacks. Or you could say, you know, say the setback is, I don't know, 20 feet or 40 feet. You could say, okay, we, for ground-mounted solar panels, we can reduce the setback by, say, 50%. So, you know, for 20-yard side yard setback, it could go to 10. For 40-foot rear yard setback, it could go to 20. Um, in both of these, I said it should not apply to the front yard. Um, I don't think it's, that's an appropriate place for it. Obviously, if you disagreed, we could allow ground, you know, solar arrays in the front yard. Um, and then lastly uh, was the town center village district. Um, based on how it's worded right now, I don't think a solar panel would fit in the town village district based on trying to you know, keep it in village district character and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So it, the really, it, you know, I tried to give you two options again. You could say, in this day and age, roof mount solar panels aren't considered an architectural element that disrupts the historic and traditional character of any structure, so that any structure in the, historic, uh, in the village district could have it. Or if you wanted to modify it, you could say roof mounted solar panels that aren't visible from a public right of way might be allowed. 
because you're not, you know, and this, this, that's language I drew from uh, existing criteria within um, the village district already, where in certain situations, if you can't see something from a public right of way, it's not considering something that's impairing the district. Um, and just to let you know, there were other items that I had identified in the prior memo, um, but all those other items in terms of, say, like screening or um, coverage, um, the town already, you know, it already doesn't apply to, to, to those things. So this was just, the th these are just three different areas where regulations could, um, you know, allow greater latitude for somebody in terms of installing solar. So Dan, okay. um, for the, as just a consideration for the, the village district um, panels, uh, is it possible we could add in like uh, a, instead of having like maybe the panels themselves, we talk about um, the, the, I'm not sure exactly. Solar shingles? Right. Yes, that's it. Um, yeah, um, cer certainly we, we, can, we can talk about it. And again, I'm just, I, and I don't wanna seem like I'm trying to say we shouldn't do any of these things. This is, we don't have to do any of this to meet the requirements. It's just, they want us to go through the process. Mm -hmm. So if you find value in, in making some of these changes, I'm happy to do so, um, or tweak whatever recommendations you want to make it so that you guys are happy, um, or you think it, you know, it's most appropriate. So um, yeah, if you want, we can keep this on the agenda for next month, and if you guys have any that you really want, I think there's another step, and I can't remember what it is. Uh, I have to write a memo. I, I don't think it involves you guys, but um, yeah, if you want me to do something different or tweak any of this stuff or if you see something that's missing or if you have questions um we can go over this and you know once again i apologize for getting this late it's just oh so you want us to save questions for another time i'm happy to answer questions now i i just my question is have we ever had anybody go for an appeal on the current regulations for solar no no, I've never had to send anybody for a variance or and nobody's appealed that nobody's been denied. Um, I, I might have only denied one permit in the town. So I've only had one appeal working in Portland. Generally, I can work with people with, with, with the, the regulations and try to find a way for mm -hmm. them to, to get what they want within the regs. That's kind of my goal, um, I, you know. Um, we, we actually may have an appeal coming up in December over uh, a zoning enforcement matter. Um, but yeah, I've never had anybody, w we do a lot of solar applications. I've never had an issue with any roof mounted solar panels for any application that we've had here in town. What about windmills? So that's a, kind of a separate beast. I believe there is a height exemption is that in there? We could certainly put something like that in there. Just something about that under Because that. right right now they, they would have to meet height restrictions. Right. And that might, um, that would probably um, make them not feasible. I mean, in a residential zone, a windmill at 35 feet, I don't think that. Well, I guess at that point, are you looking at utility scale? Because if you wanted a 100 foot tall windmill, um, you know, that's more of a utility scale thing. And if it's approved by the Connecticut Siting Council, they circumvent zoning. So if you wanted even like a one megawatt solar farm and they bought land in town and they wanted to put it here, they would bypass zoning. Because it's like a cell tower too. Those go to the Siting Council. Um, they don't meet height requirements, but if the Siting Council approves it, um, you know, the state of Connecticut um, has the ability to bypass um, local control. I guess, you know, my thought that we as a commission take a look at some of these, take a close look at some of these uh, proposed regulation changes is that with solar becoming more and more popular, it might be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an attraction to the town mm -hmm. if, yep. we, if we eliminate barriers. Yeah. If we can. Yeah. So, yeah, I think right now we just have small barriers. Yeah. But, like, yep. I, I will say up front, I don't think we should get rid of, rid of setbacks or change setbacks for ground mounted. No, I agree. Because um, I've already had, we don't have, I think we only have a couple, and I've, I've gotten comments from neighbors, certain neighbors, uh, about this. And I think if it was any closer, 
you know, yeah. we get yeah. ang angrier comments. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So next steps are for us to kind of review this and we'll discuss further. Yeah, I'll, 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 keep, I'll keep this one on again uh, for next okay. next next meeting. Yep. Okay, any other old business, Dan? Nope, there's nothing else on the agenda, so we'll move on then to staff report. Um, Town Center Village Review, 200, 204 to 206 Main Street, roofing, decking, and siding repairs. I believe Liz sent these letters to you, did she? I didn't get them. Okay, so I do have approval letters <laughs> from these from Torrance. They're, these are maintenance more than anything else. Um, Torrance did approve them. Uh, some of it's safety, so we're trying to push this forward a little quickly because it involves uh, staircases and they need to be repaired. Um, what one of them uh, kind of came out of a, uh, a complaint to the building official. So um, I do have two motions. It's for um, some decking and some staircase repair work, siding, and a roof repair. Where, where, where is, yeah, where two, are the hundred, two or four, two or six? Uh, what, what, what do you, uh, you know the computer repair place, Zaz, yeah, fishing yeah. place? That's one of them. Okay. Uh, I think that's 204. 206 is the apartment right behind that. And 200 is the beautiful old Victorian house behind the gas station thing, whatever that is. Yeah, the, whatever that is. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, former gas station, I guess that's what it is. But, um, so that, that's the three structures. Um, and they got approved by yeah Torrance did approve them okay. yeah it's the same contractor doing both real nice guy um, and two two separate owners one's a uh, property management company and the others uh, just uh, I, th I think he I think he lives there so any objections to moving forward with no. the motions no. okay I'll entertain the motion stand I, I do have two for the two different uh, prop, uh, owners would you read more of them anyway, please? Yeah. Uh, motion to approve application for 204 206 Main Street. Request for a TCVD approval for repair of decking, siding, and roofing, and recommended by the TCVD design consultant. Application of HH Home Performance and Property of 204 206 Main Street, LLC. Map 19, lot 44, zone B3. Reasons, building repairs conform to ZR and TCVD requirements. May I have a second to the motion, please? Seconded. Um, let's see, okay, we'll start with voting. Victoria? I vote aye. Chantal? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. Rob? Aye. I vote aye. Any opposed or would be none, the motion is approved. Thank you did such a nice job on that one. Second motion. Should I go now or? Please. To approve application for 200 Main Street, we request for TCVD approval for repair of deck and recommended by the TCVD design <coughs> consultant. Application of HH Home Improvement and property of Lawrence Carazella. Map 19, lot 43, zone B3. Reasons, building repairs conform to ZR and TCVD requirements. May I have a second to the motion? Second. Okay, we'll start to do voting. Victoria? Aye. Chantel? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. Rob? Aye. Bob, I vote aye. Um, any opposed? There would be none, so the motion is approved. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything else on uh, Town Center Village, Dan? Uh, no, but I, I would like to give you one un update under correspondence. Yes, please. Uh, so uh, going back to the prior meeting, 378 Cox Road subdivision, uh, the reduction in the fee uh, for that subdivision since it was already passed once. Uh, I talked with Liz Tripp, uh, our land use, uh, I call her land use administrator. I'm not sure what her title is, but... She's great. Um, and we, we, we are charging for the signs, um, charging for the legal notice. Uh, so uh, we, we came up with a, a, a $600 figure, uh, which is a reduction of $2,800. So the applicant was happy, and I think we have more than enough to cover our, our costs. 
for the town. So I, I think that's a win-win for both, but I thought I should just let you know um, about that. And other than that, that, that's all I got. Okay. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to public comment then. Any, any members of the public who would like to make any brief comments at this point? There is no members of the public in the room. Anybody on chat? Okay. Thank you then. We will move on. Next item is approval of minutes from November 3rd. And present at that meeting were myself, Rob, Chantel, Carolyn, Victoria, all the regulars. So, any discussion on these minutes before we approve? Okay, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of November 3rd then? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. And may I have a motion to adjourn? Please? So moved. Second? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, Oops, sorry. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.